Hey everybody, it's me, John Anthony Chihok Soltero. I am here today to do another unboxing and reaction um, video. Uh, got quite a few um, views and got some new subscribers. I'm very, very thankful for that. Trying to just kind of up the, the quality and the reaction of like what I do here on the video. And since it looks like it's gonna be a while before I start going back into production on my comic books, um, I'm going to take some time and go through an unboxing and reaction of this. This is the McFarlane Toys uh, animated Batman or B-Taz uh, figure. And so I'm going to unbox him right now. We'll go through the reaction and see what he's all about. Okay, so we've got him out of the package now. And again, um, these packages are not collector friendly if you're gonna take them out pose them you know put them back in because the base um has the you know the plastic seal around it so you have to destroy the package i'm starting to get into opening my my figures and stuff like that because i want to pose them or take them to work and put them up on my desk and stuff like that um very much like the John Stewart, this is a very top-heavy figure. He's got the very, as you can see, the very, very wide shoulders. Um, he's got a good design, though. Um, but as they've said in a lot of the other videos, like Toysh's, he's got the early B-Taz body design. Um, but he's got more of the Gotham Adventures head and face. Uh, which has thrown some people off. Some people don't like it. Um, I'm okay with this. Uh, the 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 Walmart, of course, um, uh, it had they had two versions of this. They also had the regular comic book Batman from the Detective One Thousand, um, and I decided to go with with this one. Give me just a second here. All right, we've got him standing. Um, and a little gingerly, and, and I'm going to have to play with him a little bit. Uh, this knee was buckling quite a bit right when I started bending the knees. Um, some of the cool things about this figure is the accessories. And I, and I think that's going to be kind of one of the saving graces. With the, the John Stewart, uh, he came with the large, um, um, the large construct uh and the scope or the the eyesight um this batman comes with two additional hands he comes with his grapnel gun and he comes with a battery so give me a second i'm going to switch out the hands and we'll see how he holds uh his accessories all right, so as you can see, we've switched out the hands, and we've got his grapnel gun in uh, in his right hand. We've got his batarang in his left hand. The batarang is curved, uh, and it's it's super super thick. But with with the opening of his hands, it's kind of necessary, I'm guessing. The other thing that I didn't realize, um, and the John Stewart figure, I'm pretty sure his hands don't don't come off. Uh, normally speaking, when you have the removable hands, the peg is on the hand, but the peg is actually on the wrist. But look at the size of the peg. Now, the reason I bring that up is because um, normally when we're talking about the, the figures with the removable hands, the pegs are very small. They're very, uh, I, I wouldn't say they're prone to break. But when they're smaller, of course, when you try to force them in or you don't get them in just right, they're, they're going to break more often than not. Um, so it's something that, that, you know, needs to be careful. So that's, that's a plus. Um, on, the, on the minus side, it seemed like the hand was kind of coming off a little bit easier when I was trying to put the grapnel gun in place. Um, it would have been nice if they had manufactured the hand to be kind of separated so that the handle would go in and then he's clicking it with one hand so that you had a hand specifically for the grapnel gun. But if you see his hand, it's shaped more like he's going to be 
holding a gun, um, which kind of doesn't make sense with with the way the grapnel is built. However, this grapnel, it is, I mean, if it didn't have the hooks coming out of it already, it is very much like the gun that he uses or the, the grappling hook that he uses in the show. So, I mean, that's really cool to me that it's a little bit more uh, animated accurate or, or stage accurate. Um, I'm a huge BTAS fan. Um, I've, I've, uh, I grew up on BTAS. I was about 14 when it came out. Um, uh, to me, uh, Kevin Conroy is the, the preeminent Batman. Mark Hamill is the preeminent Joker. Uh, I'm a big, big, big fan of the series and everything that it spawned. Uh, Mask of the Phantasm, Sub-Zero, Batman Beyond, uh, Superman the Animated Series, and then the entire DC Animated Universe, which uh, I don't think has ever really turned out a bad movie or a bad series. I never saw the, the later Batman series. I think the last one I saw was The Batman, which I liked for its character designs and changes. Um, but a lot of people, that's when they, you know, really stopped watching. Uh, I was, you know, that was in the 2000s, so I was going to college at that point. Um, and so it was a little bit different. Um, but I, I just wanted to, you know, do this review. I'm liking this figure. He's leaning back a little bit, if you can see. Actually, no, he's not. He just looked like he was leaning back to me, and <laughs> now he's tilting back. Um with the these are kind of more like the old um uh what do you call them uh the the marvel toy biz marvel legends uh because their toes are articulated as well uh and if the joints are loose then or the the pivot is loose it's going to mean that they you know just tip over and stuff like that but i mean so far he's looking okay The cape makes it harder to pose him. His legs seem... Whereas some of the other videos kind of made the legs on the Batman seem like they were a little more substantial than the Jon Stewart Green Lantern, they're only slightly bigger. I would love to do a comparison, except Green Lantern is over uh, in, my, uh, in my office at work, um, so I can't do a side-by-side. -side. Maybe I'll do a side-by-side -side in the future. Um, but he's got decent detail. He almost looks like a maquette of sorts. Head is a little bit difficult to pivot around. But you get a decent little action pose. You can probably pivot his leg out a little bit more. The joints... On the knee are not bad. They're double joints on the knee. They're single joints on the elbows. Um, but with a figure that's that's this big and this heavy, you're probably not gonna you know do like anything really really big and serious with them. I did pick up uh, a two pack of the DC Comics uh, Direct Essentials um, figure stands and. When I bought them, I didn't realize there were actually two in there. I thought it was one base with two stands that you could have them facing off against each other. I'm going to do a review of those uh, in the future as well. They're they're perfect if you're doing uh, any six inch you know figures squaring off with each other, uh, which I uh, have already done a couple of. Um, his foot doesn't want to stay on the peg that well. But I think if you get a good, a good wide base position, you're going to be okay with this. Um, one of the, the commenters on the last video said they wouldn't have started with the, the animated uh, figures um, just because they're not their favorites. And, and, you know, everybody's got a different liking or disliking two different styles of figures. I happen to be a really big fan of the early... DC Animated Universe, and, and I love the reimagining and the redesigns of the characters 
for a simpler animated style. It means a lot more to me now as uh, I went to school and got a degree in animation. And when you're doing 2D animation, you have to simplify. You take your, your design, it can be a really, really complex design, but you have to simplify it. Why? Because you're gonna be animating hundreds and thousands of images just to get a few seconds of footage. And you don't want to be putting a ton of detail into it. That's why even a lot of like manga that's being translated to anime is um, pretty is fairly simplified. I, th I think some of the animes tend to be a little bit more detailed. Um, more of the detailed 2D animation is really reserved for movies. Um, but again, it's going to break down to what what is your style. Um, I'm really looking forward to finding uh, the, the McFarlane Nightwing because Nightwing is my favorite character, um, a big fan, um, and hopefully we'll get to see that in the future as well. Um, so let me know what you think. If, you've, if you guys have gotten the Batman animated series figure from McFarlane Toys, uh, what did you guys think of it? What, what works for you? What doesn't work for you? Um, I definitely know that if, you know, the the body with the head from the two different lines, um, it, it's, it's a little weird. It's not that bad, though. Not in my eyes. Um, it's still more of a cohesive design, so I'm, I'm totally okay with it. Um, and then, you know, just finding this uh, and deciding to get it because I'm a big fan of BTAS. Um, but I need to get the 6-inch... Uh, B-Taz Batman from DC Direct uh, because I need to have Bane breaking his back. <laughs> but uh, comment, like, uh, if you subscribe, I really appreciate it. Thank you to my new subscribers uh, that we've gotten this past week. Uh, it's really, really appreciated. Hope you're enjoying the different videos on the channel. And I'm going to try to up my game a little bit on how I'm presenting things. So let me know what you think if you've watched any of the other videos. Um, if you want to see a review or a reaction, you know, we'll see what we can do because it's really going to be based on what I can get my hands on. Um, but I will see you guys soon and I will have a, an art update on some of the sketch covers that I've also been working on. So you guys have a great day.